I would like to welcome the Honorable Christine Elliott, Deputy Premier and Minister of Health, to our facility. We are delighted to have you here today for a long-awaited and much-anticipated announcement. As well, welcome MPP Jim Wilson, mayors from our South Georgian Bay municipalities, inclusive of Mayor Brian Saunderson from the town of Collingwood, Mayor Nina Bifulci from the town of Wasaga Beach, Mayor Doug Patterson from Clearview Township, and Mayor Paul McQueen from Gray Highlands, along with the Warden George Cornell from the Simcoe, County of Simcoe. Your ongoing support and engagement continue to be valued and appreciated. Today you will hear from key officials and stakeholders from our community as Minister of Health Christine Elliott provides an exciting announcement regarding our hospital development. This is an important announcement for Collingwood General and Marine Hospital, our employees, credentialed staff, patients, families, caregiver advisors, and the entire South Georgian Bay community. Once again, thank you for joining us here today. And now, please join me in welcoming the Honorable Christine Elliott, Deputy Premier and Minister of Health, to the podium. Well, thank you very much, Leslie, for your kind introduction, and good afternoon, everyone. It is a great pleasure to be here in Collingwood to celebrate some very, very exciting news for your community. But first and foremost, I would like to thank the healthcare staff, leadership, uh, workers, and everyone else here at Collingwood General and Marine Hospital for your heroic response to the COVID-19 pandemic and your commitment to protect the health and well-being of all members of your community. From using virtual platforms to support mental health services, to running a COVID-19 testing facility and administering COVID-19 vaccines at the Royal Canadian Legion, you have risen to every challenge with creativity and determination. Thank you for going above and beyond each and every day to provide exceptional care to all of your patients. Now, long before any of us had heard of COVID-19, remember those days? I, I barely can at this point. But our government did make a commitment to end hallway health care and to build a modern, connected health care system that focuses on the needs of patients and families. An important part of that commitment, of course, is ensuring that our hospitals have the resources that they need to deliver high quality care and equipping them to respond to any scenario. As your community continues to grow, your local hospital will need more capacity and modern technology to support high quality patient care. That's why I am very pleased to announce that our government is investing over $15 million to support the planning and design of a redeveloped Collingwood General and Marine Hospital. This is great news. Over the course of the project, the current hospital will be expanded and upgraded with modern facilities to replace existing aged infrastructure, improve access to high quality care, and of course, end hallway health care. The project is proposed to include the expansion of key areas such as intensive care, inpatient care, and the operating suite to increase capacity for more patients and their families. And by expanding the current site, we will be able to maximize existing infrastructure during the initial development and prioritize departments that require immediate upgrades through new construction. Your communities can look forward to a modern hospital that will serve Collingwood and the surrounding area for generations to come. In the meantime, we also know that you need support to continue responding to the pandemic. That's why our government has increased Collingwood General's operating funding for the third straight year. Starting in 2021-22, Collingwood General will receive over $1.9 million in additional funding, which represents a 4.2% increase from last year. This investment is part of our government's plan to ensure that everyone who needs care anywhere in Ontario can and will receive it. 
I do want to congratulate all of the community partners here in Collingwood and in the surrounding regions who have come together in support of this project. And I also want to especially thank your local MPP, Jim Wilson, for his passionate champion, championing of this project alongside you. And I know that uh, MPP Wilson has invited me several times, uh, including inside the legislature, to come and visit Collingwood. And I'm very, very happy to be able to be here with all of you today and to thank MPP Wilson for all his work done on your behalf. Thank you, MPP Wilson. So together, we are going to build a modern Collingwood General and Marine Hospital and end hallway health care for the residents of Collingwood and surrounding areas. And so I thank you for all of the work that many of you have done to get us to this point. And now I would like to hand things over to Nora Holder, President and CEO of Collingwood General and Marine Hospital and an incredible advocate for health care in your community to please say a few words. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nora Holder, and I am the President and CEO of Collingwood General in Marine Hospital. Thank you, Honorable Christine Elliott, Deputy Minister and Minister of Health, for your exciting announcement regarding the Collingwood General and Marine Hospital. Indeed, today, the future for South Georgian Bay is bright. Today, we are extremely grateful and pleased to receive formal approval for Stage 1, submission, and to officially move to Stage 2 to our five-stage hospital redevelopment. Collingwood General Marine Hospital, in collaboration with patient, family, and caregiver advisors, the South Georgian Bay, Ontario Health Team, regional partners, and our community look forward to working together over the next 12 to 18 months to further define programs, services, and space requirements that are so very much required to serve the health needs of one of the fastest growing communities in Ontario. We look forward to co-designing spaces that will meet current and emerging healthcare standards and an environment that supports the health and the wellness of our people, our employees, our physicians, and our midwives. We are thrilled with the prospect of providing our community and our people with a facility that meets the growing needs of our community and provides care closer to home. They deserve this so very much. A hospital redevelopment is a marathon and not a sprint. Today's announcement demonstrates a strong commitment to our South Georgian Bay community. Thank you to MPP Jim Wilson. Thank you, Jim for your tremendous dedication and commitment to our hospital redevelopment. Please know your advocacy is and continues to be deeply appreciated. Please now join me in welcoming Jack Marley, Collingwood General and Marine Hospital Foundation Board Chair to the podium. Thank you. Thank you, Nora. We are grateful to Minister Elliott and the Capital Branch of the Ministry of Health for the approval of Stage 1A and B planning documents, including the exciting new health care programs and services to be provided to our community. With the announcement today, our community begins a journey that will provide a state-of-the-art medical facility for the entire South Georgian Bay area. Together, we will build a facility that fosters the medical innovation CGMH is known for and provides the appropriate space to strengthen our hospital's reputation as a leader in rural medicine. As chair of the CGMH Foundation, I know that all of our volunteers and staff will be up to the monumental challenge. The foundation will continue to work, will continue our, our work, I should say, to support the ongoing equipment needs of our current facility as our partners on the hospital board and leadership team undertake the detailed work required to ensure we create a facility that meets the growing needs of our entire region. Thank you for celebrating this momentous announcement 
for the future of all who live, work, and play in all of South Georgian Bay communities. I would like to uh, call on Jim Wilson now to the podium. Thank you. Uh, Minister Elliott, Christine, thank you very much for fulfilling your promise to come to Collingwood to have a first-hand look at our General Marine Hospital. It's an historic day for the people of Collingwood and Southern Georgian Bay. We're very proud of this place, our hospital, which has served our community well for more than 60 years. But as you can see and as you've seen, Minister, the uh, best before date has long since passed. Nora and Dr. Lisi and their dedicated colleagues are doing a great job providing hospital services for the 60,000 residents of South Georgian Bay and the hundreds of thousands of more visitors who uh, are, are tourists to our area each year. But it is clear that major investment in modern facilities will be required if they are to continue meeting the needs now and for the future. Minister, your visit is an important step in the process of achieving our goal of building a much needed redeveloped hospital. Ontario spends almost 40 cents of every dollar it collects on health care. It is by far the province's largest, largest budget envelope. Thankfully, we have a government prepared to invest some of those tax dollars in our region. On behalf of the community, we are grateful to you, Minister Elliott, and to the Ford government for your commitment to this long overdue and much needed project. Christine Simcoe Gray truly appreciates having a friend like you in charge. We are looking forward to the day when shovels go in the ground for our, and I've come up with a new term, our new redeveloped hospital. Thank you for recognizing the people in our area. Thank you for recognizing that they're entitled to the same level of health care that all Ontarians expect and deserve. We're more than ready to raise our share of the cost. And again, Christine, I want to say on behalf of the community, on behalf of the residents of Simcoe Gray and Southern Georgian Bay, uh, it's great to have a friend in high places. You're an excellent Deputy Premier. You've taken us through a crisis pandemic in the province of Ontario, leadership second to none, you and the Premier. And we're just so grateful you fulfilled your promise to be with us today. Thank you so much. <laughs> now I'd like to ask uh, His Worship, uh, Mayor Brian Saunderson, to come to the podium. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jim. Good afternoon, everyone. Collingwood General Marine Hospital has been serving the residents of the region and Collingwood since 1887. It is a critical part of the fabric of our community, and it serves our region. And uh, it gives me great pleasure to be here today to celebrate this great announcement, uh, which is a huge step forward uh, in recognition of the hard work of our hospital board and Chair Leslie Paul, our hospital foundation and Chair Jack Marley, and of course our hospital staff, CEO Nora Holder, Dr. Lisi and their teams for their hard work over the last years to make this commitment a reality. I also want to thank Minister Elliott, the Premier, and the provincial government for making this strong commitment to making sure that our residents, as a growth node in the province of Ontario with unprecedented growth going on, will have a health care facility to give our residents the appropriate state-of-the-art health care uh, as we move forward for decades to come. Today is truly an important step. There are more to happen, and I know that I stand with my fellow mayors, Mayor Bafulci, Mayor Measures, Mayor McQueen, uh, <laughs> Warden Cornell, and, uh, and we will be working together to make sure that we make this uh, new facility a reality as we move forward. I also want to acknowledge the incredible work of our MPP, Jim Wilson, in making this uh, day happen. He's been a staunch champion of bringing uh, increased health care to our, to our riding and uh, has been serving our riding for 30 years now and uh, giving us great service. So Jim, thank you very much for all you've done. So thank you very much everyone. We look forward to working with uh, everyone to make sure that we get this hospital moving forward. It's been a lot of work getting here and there's much to be done. Thank you very much and I'll call CEO Nora Holder back. Thank you, Mayor Saunderson, for your remarks. Today's announcement represents a significant achievement for our South Georgian Bay community and for the 3.5 million visitors who pre-COVID visited us and our lovely community each year. 
We are thrilled to begin stage two of our five-stage hospital redevelopment. Thank you to the Honorable Christine Elliott, Deputy Premier and Minister of Health, CGMH employees and physicians, our hospital and foundation board members, Mayor McQueen, Mayor Bafulci, Mayor Measures, Mayor Saunderson, Warden Cornell from the County of Simcoe for being present today. It is a pleasure to share the great news with you all. Please now join me in welcoming the Honorable Minister Elliott to the podium for the question and answer session. Thank you very much. to opt for a redevelopment on the current site uh, as opposed to a new hospital built on a different site? Well, I would say, as you, as you can imagine, there has been a, a, a big demand for funds for health care dealing with COVID, and there is only so much money that can be put into capital redevelopment. But this was a really important project, and that's why we're moving forward with the second phase of the redevelopment of the Collingwood uh, General Marine Hospital. Uh, and that's why the $15 million is going into the uh, redevelopment and planning. So it's a, it's a special project and one that uh, is as uh, long overdue as MPP Wilson said. Um, and in follow-up to long overdue, when do you expect the work to, to begin physically on the hospital? When will the building begin? Well, I, I would say that's going to depend on the uh, time it takes for the planning to happen, and I'm sure there's a lot of work that needs to be done, although I understand that there are some specific ideas about what needs to be advanced, but uh, that, that t does take time because it is a, a, a big consideration on a fairly small footprint, uh, but uh, we plan to work together with uh, Ms. Holder and the, everyone on the team here at the Collingwood Hospital to uh, work with people at the Ministry of Health to make sure we can move things forward as quickly as possible. Um, hey. The Ontario LTC Association joined the Nurses Association and the uh, Doctors Association once again calling for a mandated vaccinations for healthcare workers, for LTC workers. Your government has said that it will always listen to health experts. How can this government uh, now ignore what is such an overwhelming number of health experts in your province mm -hmm. calling for mandated vaccinations? Well, I would say there's a mixture of views on that particular subject, and uh, we are not mandating vaccines for anyone, although we strongly encourage people to, uh, to take the vaccine. That is a significant uh, protection for you, for your loved ones, and for your community. So that's a position that we're taking. However, we know that many hospitals have already put in place measures to ensure that for those um, healthcare workers that do not receive the vaccine, that they will be tested on a very regular basis to make sure that they are healthy and that their entry into the hospital or wherever their place of work is, if it's a long-term care home, uh, won't jeopardize the residents. So hospitals are already dealing with that, but we aren't proposing to make it mandatory. Uh, this next question is for a colleague of mine, Sean O'Shea. Um, I know you. Uh, so there's, once again, uh, a local business association that is calling for vaccine certificates um, and proof of vaccination. I know you've said the second dose receipt works and uh, you've punted the, uh, the responsibility up to the federal government in previous responses. But, uh, you know, once again, uh, his question is that we know some consumers and businesses are in favor of the idea of having proof of vaccination based on that and some reluctance on the part of a segment of the population to go into businesses like restaurants wouldn't this proof actually be good for businesses and good for the economy? Uh, the second dose receipt is confirmation that people have received the two doses, which has been recommended uh, by Health Canada and uh, is uh, sufficient proof that they have been vaccinated. Once you get into something more than that, um, a, a card or whatever nature that is, then you end up with all kinds of other considerations about production, about um, fraud prevention, of course, we're now getting rid of the red and white Ontario OHEP cards for some of those reasons. Those 
problems would occur with respect to a smart card as well. So I think there's a lot of work that still needs to be done on that issue, but in the meantime, people do have their proof of vaccination in the receipt that they receive after their second vaccine. talked to, City News has talked to um, public health professors, we've talked to uh, all sorts of people on the science table, and they all agree when it comes to vaccine certification, to enter a non-essential business should be used. Um, the framework plan should not come from, or should come from the provincial government rather than private enterprises creating their own rules and regulations. And as cases rise, why don't you have a, a certificate you can just show a person going into a restaurant, so vaccinated people can go into a restaurant together, and maybe that would help mm -hmm. that 20% of the people merge into the vaccinated area. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there is already the certificate that people receive indicating that they've had two doses and they're considered to be fully vaccinated. That is something that some businesses are requiring for some of their workers, some uh, restaurants. Others can do that if they wish to do so, and that is something that uh, we are encouraging people to do, of course. We've also changed some of our reporting starting today, which indicates uh, both the number of cases that are out there, but also the number of people that are hospitalized and the number of people that are in ICUs, and showing whether they're vaccinated or non-vaccinated. The vast majority of cases, it's people who are not vaccinated. So I think that it, it speaks for itself. The, uh, the need for people to be vaccinated to, uh, to protect themselves and their family and their, and their whole community. That's how we reach that uh, immunity that we're all looking for. And that's how we uh, defeat the, uh, the Delta variant as well. But the uh, province of Ontario, we already have vaccination certificates that are distributed by the Ontario government. Our yellow immunization cards that children have to get uh, are monitored and kept by the provincial governments. So why are we trying to pump this to the federal government or put it onto private businesses when we already know the vaccine statuses of people in Ontario are already monitored by the Ontario government? Like in order to, for little Johnny to go to school, you have to show that vaccine, vaccination record. Yes. Well, the, um, the issue of, I think there's a couple of issues here. One is a vaccine passport, which is a different item. And that is something that is properly in the realm of the federal government to deal with because it will involve international travel and, and other issues. But in terms of the, in terms of what's happening within Ontario, that is uh, we up to the businesses to determine whether they want to see proof of vaccination from the people that are working from them. But that has always been our position that we are not mandating vaccines, that that is something for people to choose for themselves. But we encourage people to get vaccinated. We encourage people to look online, to look at the information that we already have available out there. We're doing telephone town halls, we're doing information sessions to, um, to deal with some of the, I would say, the, the myths out there about vaccines and to, um, to demonstrate that they are safe and that they are effective and that we really encourage everyone to, uh, to receive not just one, but both vaccines. Yeah, Ian Adams, uh, Simco.com, The Calling Connection. Okay. Uh, I want to get a better handle on exactly what's involved with stage one, stage in stage two, I know the uh, the hospital had a pretty significant wish list going into this process of programs and bed counts. And, and is this stage sort of a, a winnow, winnowing down of, of that wish list, or uh, what's the next step? No, this is the actual functional planning stage to uh, to get from having a general idea, having a planning grant to um, indicate what type of facility that is wanted, and then it's a question of the. Uh, the hospital and their team coming forward with their specific plan which gets submitted to the Ministry of Health and then it gets reviewed from a, a financial analysis. Uh, we're not at that stage yet because there's still the functional planning that needs to be done but that involves a lot of costs there may be engineering, architectural costs, other costs that, that need to be uh, used in order to come forward with a functional plan for uh, for viewing by the Ministry and by viewing uh, by the community as well to determine if that's what the people of Collingwood and surrounding area want to see. I, I don't know if this is a question for you or the or Nora. If if you're confident that that what you want to do can be accomplished on this property or whether property acquisition or what have you will need to be done. Uh, 
I think I would leave that question to Ms. Holder to answer. Thank you, Minister Elliott. Um, stage two will uh, also be an opportunity for us, Ian, to take a look at the uh, services and programs that we've already, during stage one, determined were essential and needed here. And so until we determine the services and the programs and then finish the functional planning in terms of what the size and the needs of those spaces are, uh, really can't comment on the space yet. So for me, right now, it's about the verifying the programs and the services, taking a look at what the space is, and then we can take a look at, okay, we're, what, is the, what is it that we need um, in terms of land, etc. cetera, um, what can we build uh, in relation to that. So stage two, uh, we'll probably define that better. So um, I would not want to be premature in saying anything else but that, and I hope that's helpful. I'm just going to take one last question from the floor. So Rob Cooper with CTV News, you can stay there if you don't mind. Um, so I'm trying to understand, will this building get bigger? Is there going to be a bigger footprint? I mean, is that your initial plan right now? So the initial plan was to uh, create um, a footprint that is at almost, almost three times as big to meet these standards. And this was pre-COVID. So now we have uh, COVID and uh, there will be new and emerging standards uh, that will uh, definitely impact uh, what the size and the footprint will be uh, and so uh, I hope that answers your question Rob. Yeah I'm just trying to understand though I mean I, I know it's, it's early for you to try and say where you're going to go or what exactly you're going to need but again just the size of this what can people who live here should they expect construction working on the hospital while they're coming here I mean is there going to be an addition more brick and mortar you know what I mean? So the approval was uh, to move forward with stage two uh, in terms of redeveloping the hospital and adding on a new part to the hospital as well. We need to take a look at the services and programs and determine what parts of this hospital actually can be redeveloped to provide patient services, what types of services, and also what do we require in a newly built state uh, in regards to having a state-of-the-art hospital that meets current and emerging standards, particularly in terms of IPAC, infection prevention and control, safety, privacy, all of those things. So uh, it's, it's both. You said stage two of five. How long would before we get to stage five, ballpark? Don't know. All I can say is stage two is going to take 12 to 18 months. Thank you. And then that will conclude the question and answer period. And I think we're going to go and take some pictures now. Thanks.